All right. Why did I do that? <laughs> uh, let me pause. All right. Uh, just a quick rehash of what's going to be happening. We're going to continue in Chapter 5 now and, and go from there. Uh, the test that I've just given the two of y'all, like you got to leave. Um, let me find, ask this question first. Is anyone here graduating this term? Anyone? No one. Okay. That relieves some pressure. Okay. Uh, but not a lot. Okay. Uh, then, the rest of you, if you're graduating this term, I have to have your grades in by noon on Friday, meaning I have to have your test back by Thursday of this week. But, if you're not graduating, that, oh, it might have to plug in the projector. Okay. Uh, if it's not graduating, then I have to have them in by uh, any time Monday of next week. You have one full week to work on them. I encourage you to try to get them in to me sooner rather than later because I don't want to grade everything on Tuesday and Wednesday morning. So uh, if you can get them to me any sooner, that's great. And also, Research papers, are those in already? Uh, you just turn them on. Okay, I need research papers in. Um, if you get them in today, you get full credit. If I get it in tomorrow or later, you start losing points. So, um, and there's Josh. Okay. So, now. Also, I was going to return all papers to you today that have been turned in so far. Has anyone got a test? Okay. Why is it doing this? That's not helping any. That. Okay. All right. Uh, any late papers coming? Now, I can't return research papers, or should I say research paper, because that's all I got so far. Uh, yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but any tests that you got to turn in. Let me go on and get those now. I'll forever hold the key. Okay. Okay. You said the research paper needs to be turned in today. Today, if possible. Right. Yeah. Then submit it online. And then that will be fine, but uh, I grade what I get, so be sure it's in the format you want me to grade. The yeah. PDF. That, yeah, that's fine, too. Yeah, yeah. don't take a picture of it. Well, actually, my near, I don't have a new computer, but my more recent computer may be able to even read a JPEG file, but yeah, I just prefer PDF there. That's better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So has anyone got any test to turn in today? Okay, you did you turned it. Okay. Okay. Of any of you need a test you didn't pick up? One one, two, or three. Everybody turned in everything. Okay, well then I'm going to return these tests to you. Not that you'll need them for the exam or anything, but Oh, it's not, you know, this, but this time, not necessarily in the round anymore. Just, okay. 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 I'm going to hold off on returning test three then until returning your final. I'll give it to you then. Be sure to ask. Okay. Okay. But test one. Anybody? Any reason that I can't return test one? Okay. Okay. Alright. After 
Get, get one that means I uh, didn't have it in time to grade it. Okay. Uh, if you turned it in late last week, I didn't have time to grade it. Okay, oh yeah, let me get that. Uh, yeah. Let me give you the rest of my schedule this week to let you know where I am and, and when I'll be there or wherever. All right, today we have class. I have class basically until 4, 3.45. Uh, I do have 45 minutes for lunch. You can bring it by then. I don't think you'll be through with it by then. But then starting tomorrow is when finals technically begin. And I have a final 8 o'clock in the morning down the hall at 2.05. So uh, from 8 to 10, basically, I'll be there. Okay, then after that, because I have a mini term two class, I have a class in here at 1.15. So from 10 o'clock until 1.15, I'll be in my office at 2.65. 1.15, we've got class here, and they're doing a lab and a test. And that's all, so I'm guessing I won't be here much more than two and a half hours, okay? So from 1.15 to about 3.45, I imagine they'll all be through by then. Then I'll be back in my office till 6. I'll be in my office today from 4, four to 6, okay? Uh, so that's, that's tomorrow. Wednesday, I have absolutely no outside things, so I'll be in my office from... 8 o'clock in the morning until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. At 4, I have to go to the Birmingham East Campus because I have a physics class there. They'll be turning in their work there from 4.30 to 6.30. So if that's more convenient for you, I'm in the nursing building uh, on the East Campus, and I'm in room 103 there. That's from 4 to 4.30 to 6.30 on Wednesday. Okay, Thursday, I'm back here. And I don't have anything in the morning, so from 8 until 1 o'clock, I'm in my office, 265. But then from 1 to, it won't be more than 30 minutes, I don't think, for them to finish their final. Uh, so their, the final exam is, like, let's say from 1 to 1.30. It's a very short final, so I don't think any of them will take that long. But I'll be here in the classroom, and I'm back in the office until 6. And then on Friday, I'm on the Birmingham West Campus, where I usually am on Friday from 8 to 12. Okay? Then the following Monday, the last day to turn them in will be 8 to 6 in my office, 265. Okay? Tuesday, I'll be here 8 to 6, but I'll be grading like crazy and not a happy camper to be getting late work in. But I will take it, but don't wait till then. Get it in this, you know, in the next week. Okay. And then Wednesday, grades have to be in by noon. On Wednesday, if I don't have your stuff by then, or you just got it to me, I don't have time to get it in, it will be an incomplete until I get to work or have a chance to grade it. So please, let's not do that either. But uh, I will do that if I don't have it. Does that answer everything you need? All right, good deal. All right. Hope you feel better. Okay. Back to you. Patience, long suffering, 
Okay. Good deal. All right, good deal. Thank you. All right, I am still recording. So, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, this is what I wanted to do. Slideshow, current slide. Okay. Um, so let me arrange things for trying not to distribute papers all over the floor. All right. First, any questions on anything we've done so far? Okay. Oh, I meant to tell them that before they left, so I hope they listen. How many have done the student course evaluations? Uh -oh. oh, a couple have. One has, anyway. Please do the student course evaluation. Please, okay? Uh, oh, let me ask this while I'm thinking of it. Do you need a number grade as well as a letter grade? Do you know Okay. Uh, are you homeschooling or? Okay, you don't need to turn in a numerical grade. So you already need to turn things in. I don't think so. Okay. If you do, let me know. I can give you one. I'll make up something. No, I mean, I mean <laughs> you'll have an answer. Right now, it's pretty good. Never mind. Okay. Uh, Frank is here. Frank, if it's changing before you leave today, I'll give you your first two tests. Um, holding off on the very first bill. So couple people need to turn that in. Okay. And uh, by the way, Bill, you had asked for a worked out something on stuff there. I tried to do it all on the paper that I just returned to. Or that was test three. Okay, okay. Okay, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. But if that was test three, uh, you don't have that one yet, but it'll be on there when you do it. Okay. All right. Any questions now? I'm sorry this has been so disjointed today. End of the term, first of the term are crazy, and we've already begun the crazy part. Now, we've already done this example, if I'm not mistaken. In fact, the one that I have marked in the book, I thought we had done too. Example four. Didn't we? We did not do example four. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. We have to come back and do four and five because I forgot to do it. I'm glad someone has a mind that works still, okay? Mine got etched to sketch away last week, and uh, okay, so let's do example four. Let me get this. Okay. So, again, no questions. Let's get going on example four. So, differentiate this. F of x is equal to I don't know why it's so jittery today, but it is. Uh, it's only the screen I'm moving, nothing to do with the plug, but there must be some wires that are... Set. Let me get it written, maybe we'll quit doing it. Log of square root of x plus 1. Okay. Now, where would you begin a problem like that? Think of a couple of really good places to begin, and any one of them are good with me. Where would you begin? Oh, and what we're looking for, differentiate that. In case I, I didn't write it down, but that's what we're doing, differentiate. What would you do first? A couple of really good things to do. Yeah, put it in exponential form. Yes, I like that idea enormously, okay? That's the log of x plus 1 to the, help me, 1 half power, okay? Now, there's several reasons that's a good idea, okay? Can anyone think of why that might be a good idea? What's that? Right, yeah, get rid of the square root. Yeah, that's the main reason we did it. But what's another benefit of doing it this way then? Hey, that's a great idea. We can move the one half over here in front because of the rule for logarithms. Sorry, this keeps flashing. Hopefully, we'll quit. That's the same as one half of the log of x plus one. Okay? 
Come on back any time. Okay. Now what? So that one more time. Okay, I, I'm sorry. Okay, I thought that's what you meant when you said to do what you did. You no, when you listen to the one half hour, you have just rewritten. We haven't even started differentiating yet. Just like we rewrote it here, we rewrote it, put it back in front. Now all we do have to do is take this 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 one to this, and this is a constant. So that does here. Just a constant. It'll come back, I hope. Yeah, okay. What? What's the derivative of log of x plus 1? 1 over x plus 1. Okay. Now, that looks way too simple, doesn't it? Okay. Um, but that is the answer. Okay. Now, I understand what you are saying. Okay, but you're not differentiating okay I think what I understood you to say is we're going to maybe do a chain rule on this is that what you were thinking okay so let's try that okay if you're doing it Chain rule, you first take the root of the bigger function, the outside function here is a log function, right? So if you went from this step to differentiate, didn't take advantage of the rule of logarithm, then this would have been 1 over x plus 1 to the 1 half power. Because that's what... Okay. The... The derivative of the log function is 1 over the argument. So that leaves it down here. Now, what you're suggesting is take the chain rule, take the derivative of this. Okay? Not that in the denominator, but just the derivative. Let so me put my hand here. Of that. And that would be 1 half uh, x plus 1 to the negative 1 half. Right? Okay, so this is a chain rule part. 1 half x plus 1 to the minus 1 half. Is that what you were suggesting? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now, if you'll notice what that is, this would be 1 over x plus 1 to the 1 half. Let me bring the 1 half out front, if, that okay, if that's okay. This is coming down from here. Okay. And then this is 1 over x plus 1 to the 1 half power, and this would be 1 half of 1 over x plus 1. I don't know why it's the answer to that. But you see, you get the same answer. A lot more work that way, but if you're a hard worker, it's, it's right. Every step is right. But this way, oh, thank you, rule. Okay, made it so much easier. Is that what you were thinking? But remember, you, it, that taking the derivative of this is part of the chain rule. This is the chain rule part. You first took the derivative of this, which is 1 over the argument. Then you take the derivative of the argument, which is 1 half this to the minus 1 half, which is, move that downstairs, and that, that to the 1 half, the 1 over x plus 1 to the 1 half. So these two multiply to x plus 1. So you do get the same answer. A little bit further to go to get there, but perfectly correct. But don't take the derivative of this before you do the one over. Sorry, I mean, you can, but don't forget to do the one over. And that's why I did that. Okay? I think they did it the easy way, too. But your way will work as well. Any questions on that? Make sense? Okay. That was example four. Let's do example five. All right. If there's more than one way to do the problem, as long as you do correct steps, you should get to the same answer. Number one last week, I think it was Wednesday, made 
a wrong step, and he gave us a wrong answer, of course. Math is unforgiving that way. Okay, let's differentiate this one then. Alpha of x is equal to the log of x times x squared plus 1 squared over the square root of 2x cubed minus 1. Okay? Now I can think of at least two ways to begin on this problem. Maybe more. How would you begin? What would be your suggestion? Okay, good. I was hoping you didn't mean the quotient rule for differentiation. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks for saying that last. In fact, I need more than just the quotient rule. Do as many rules as I can get away with. What do you mean by that? What would that be? Log x, let's just write that down. Log x. Yeah, okay. What would that be? Plus. Say again. Okay. Ln of x squared plus 1 squared. Next. Minus. Ln of one half. Perfect. Everybody agree with that? You're in the dark. Okay. See what he was suggesting. Let's split it up as much as possible. Product rule first: log x plus log of this x squared plus uh, one squared minus because the Log of the quotient is the difference of the logs, so that would be the quotient rule minus the log of that thing to the one half. Can anyone think of some other rules before we start differentiating? Yes, let's do the exponent rule as well. Now, log x, not much you can do with that, so we'll just leave that alone. What's next? That's an ugly L. I don't know how that came out that way. Okay, let's try that again. 2 log of what? Plus 1. Next. Minus 1 half. Excellent. The log of 2x cubed minus 1. Done. Haven't even begun to differentiate yet. Just losing, using log rules to simplify. Okay? I think we've done all we can. What's the log of the sum rule? There is none. Okay. That was a, a trick question or a rhetorical question. There is none for sums and differences. Only for products and quotients and powers. None for sums and differences. Don't make any up. Okay? I could tell when he got to this point, he was, he was trying, but you know, he hesitated not. There's none. You've done all you can with the log rules. So, what's the derivative of that mess? I mean, of this stuff. Help me. 1 over x, that's that part, plus 2 times... Okay, yep, he got the 2x there. Over x squared plus 1, is that what I heard? Okay, good. Minus 1 half. 6x squared in the numerator and 2x cubed minus 1 in the denominator. All right, well done. Medium or error, okay? We're fine, okay? This is the derivative of that. The 2 just came out front. And what he did, the derivative of the log is 1 over this, change the derivative of that. And you can do it in either order because if you remember, their rule for log, the derivative of the log is u prime over u, okay? Which is sort of just what he did there. Minus 1 
half, and again, u prime over u. Okay? Well done. Now what? <coughs> okay. 1 over x, we'll leave that by itself already, plus 4x over x squared plus 1, minus 1 half times 6x cubed squared, sorry, squared over 2x cubed minus 1. All right, now, that's a good way to leave the problem. I was hoping, well, wait, yeah, I Miss something? Yes, right. The 2 will go in the 6 three times. So let me clean that up a little bit. All right. That would be 3x squared over 2x cubed minus 1. Good way to leave it. Okay? I was hoping they weren't going to have this. Fine light turns on it is one. Thank you very much for my help. Okay, that's it. It is a slight chance that you things may simplify if you do that, but not very likely. That's a great way to leave the problem. And I think that's what they got to. 1 over x plus 4x over x squared plus 1 minus 3x squared over. Yep, got it. Any questions? Because when I was setting this up this morning, I said, wait, we did example six. I know we did. So why have I got my mark at example four? But I'm glad Fred was remembering. Okay. Because we did example six last time and the slide that follows us too. But just remember, we just saw, well, let me back off. With this, yeah, quit doing that. Am I? Okay. We saw. Back up one more second. Yeah. We saw here that using our rules of logarithm certainly makes it easier, actually, in the last one too, to differentiate the log. Using the rules first, then the log, the differentiation can be just simple. If you did 1 over this thing, which is a perfectly good move to do, times the derivative of this thing on top, u prime over u, that would give you the right answer after many hours of plus and trouble uh, and counting on you getting everything done right. Yeah, I wouldn't want to do that. Okay? But using the rule of logarithm makes it much easier to take the derivative. And that's where what we did last time comes to flow. Come on back. Okay. This. What is happening? Okay. Well. There's some bad vibes in here. I don't know what they are, but there's some really bad vibes. Okay. All right, that's where this thing that we did last time comes into play. If you have a really nasty-looking function that you're trying to take the derivative, just go on and take the log first. And we did this last time. If you were here, hopefully you remember. Take the log of that first and use the rules of logarithm to help simplify the thing. Uh, but there's one additional thing you have to worry with uh, when you do that. And they've already taken care of it here in the original problem. Most of the time that wouldn't be there. Okay? There's nothing wrong in this expression with x being equal to 2. Only thing it does for you is make your denominator or your numerator 0, which is not a problem, unless you're taking the log. Then it's a big problem because you can't take the log of 0. I mean, yeah can't take the log of zero. So um, this works as long as y is greater than zero for all x not equal to two. Well, 
that's already taken care of, so y would be equal zero if x was equal to two. So we don't have to do that. So that's the only disadvantage in doing taking the natural laws first. You have to make sure you're not excluding any results that you would have otherwise had. They've already taken care of that for us here. Take the log first, then apply the log property, and differentiate implicitly, and then finally, okay. What are you doing? Okay. All right. So they wrote the original equation. That's very good to do. And again, did I mention, I don't know where that vertical bar comes from, okay? Take a log of that, log of both sides, simplify using the rule of logarithms on the right-hand side, which we've done, and then take the derivative of log y, derivative of this whole expression. Well, derivative of the right-hand side, left-hand side, so the one thing looks like, derivative of that is what? Derivative of log y. There you go. That's it exactly. Y prime over Y. Okay. What are we looking for? Y prime. Okay. That's going to be our answer at the end. The numerator here. So you take the derivative of this, then take the derivative of this just like you did in the last problem. And those are pretty easy to do. Okay. And then once you take the derivative of this, then multiply it by y, which is that thing right here, and you have your y prime. Just like that. Okay? So y prime over y. I'm going to erase what I wrote because it's in the way. Okay? Okay? And then take it to the this. We did this last time, so you should have this in the notes. When you get to this stage, you can simplify a little bit here and there uh, and how you write it, but then, well, okay, they did it. They simplified they, Oh, I had forgotten. They multiplied through. This time, they did the least common denominator, all that kind of stuff, and then they multiplied by y, which is at the top up there. Ah, they just did it by multiplying by y. Then they plug in what y is, and that does enable them to simplify a little bit. Because so this thing to the one half power, that to the two half power, which is one, so that multiplies together to the three half power, and one of these will take one of those out. So you wind up with x minus two times x squared plus two x plus two divided by that to the three halves power. Much easier than, well, I don't know, some of you like the product, or the quotient rule a whole lot. So if you do like the quotient rule a whole lot, go on and do that to the original problem there. Knock yourself out, okay? Uh, as you can tell, I'm not a big fan. So it's, you need to know it. It does come in handy. Sometimes the only way you can do it. But there's a far easier way to do this one. That's what it was. Any questions? We did this last time. If you weren't here, go back and listen to that rendition. Okay, here's what our new stuff's coming. Uh, let me make sure I'm not skipping anything here. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, but this comes before example. Because the natural logarithm is undefined for negative numbers, and also what else? Zero. Okay, so I would say it's undefined for non-positive numbers, if I would have said that. You will often encounter expressions of the form, but now we're not worried about the zero part. Log u. Absolute value u. Because you can't take the log of a negative number. This won't help you with zero, but it will remove the negative. Next theorem states that you can differentiate functions of the form y is equal to natural log of u as though the absolute value notation is not present. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, if u is different.
possible function of x such that x such that u is not equal to zero. See, this doesn't help if u is equal to zero. Not equal to zero, then derivative with absolute value is simply u prime over u. How do they get away with that? Well, same way that uh I'm here in a minute. Taylor there, sneaking in and not letting him see you come in. That's how you get away with it. I already had you marked Taylor. I was psychotic. I mean psychic, so I knew that already. Okay. So So if you were negative then I want to say well, let's just if you were a negative number, something down here, a negative expression uh, somewhere here, the absolute value flips it across and makes it a positive value, okay? And then when you take the derivative of that and divide by the original, you kind of just this is not very precise mathematical terminology, you lose the, the negation in it. So this is indeed what they say here. Uh, they have a little proof here, um, and for those who like proofs, uh, follow through on it. Remember, if u is less than zero, absolute value of u would be negative u, and then when you do the log of negative u, you wind up with a negative u prime in the numerator, the negative u in the denominator, negative over negative is positive, so this works. The negatives cancel each other out. What I was trying to say, I was I don't know, look at that first. So it's a pretty simple process to prove that. So knock yourself out with it. I don't think they show it here. Let's do example seven here. Find the derivative of this log of cosine x absolute value of cosine x, what would you guess that to be? Say it one more time. Negative sine x over cosine x. Okay. Now let's think about that for a moment. Um, cosine x is positive from 0 to pi halves. So no sweat there. Okay. Uh, but from pi halves to 3 halves pi is negative. Okay, but the sign is uh, the derivative of the sign is negative for that whole range there. Okay, so basically the negative wipes out the negative and you wipe out the negative. So, yep, that's the answer. You don't have to go back and do it every time, but you can almost see that's going to be the case here. Okay? What's that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then you can take it one more step and make it minus tangent x. He remembered his, base, his fundamental trig identities. Right. There you go. And that's it. Minus tangent x. Which is sort of interesting, too, because tangent x is always increasing the half the time negative half positive this is uh, like this not again uh, cosine x cannot equal zero or cosine x is zero at the half pi's because it's not defined at the half pi's well guess what tangent negative tangent x is not defined at the half pi's either so it all seems to fit, and that's exactly what you got. Pretty straightforward. Now, oh, let's see how they do it. Uh, using the theorem, you just take uh, u equal cosine x, and u prime would be minus sine x. So you'd have minus sine x over cosine x, which is minus tangent x. Done. They don't do example so let's erase my scratch here and do example 8. 
locate the relative extrema of this function. Y is equal to the log of x squared plus 2x plus 3. Okay. Now, <clears throat> there is absolutely no guarantee that this is always positive, but they've written it as if it is. I think if you play around with it a little, you might see that it is. Especially if you look in the book and see. Yeah, it's a tablet. No, that's the book. X axis. So, yeah, it's always positive, but it's perfectly fine. But they're asking for the relative extrema. Okay? So, what do you do to get that? Take a derivative. So, y prime is equal to 2x plus 2 over x squared plus 2x plus 3. <laughs> <coughs> now, are you tempted to do anything with that? I'd like you to say, yeah, let's factor it, that's a number. But many of you have probably already done it in your head and realize it's not factual. Of course you have done that, right? Okay? But, the reason I know it's unfactable, I looked at the book and there was a graph of it and there was no zeros for it, so uh, uh, that won't factor really. Let's just do quickly, if we can, the quadratic formula for it. Minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared, which is 4, minus 4ac, uh, yeah, 4 times uh, 3 is 12 minus 1. 4 minus 12 minus 8. New, not going to be factorable. Not even got any real solutions at all. Well, the picture in the book told us that. So what do we do with this? We don't really care about that. Okay? I was just saying, if you thought less factor than the denominator, you can't. Okay? That's the only reason to bring that up. So what would you do? To find the extrema. Yes. Very good idea. When do the, when the, where do they occur? Okay, that's one way to phrase it. It's when the first derivative is zero or doesn't exist. And certainly it doesn't exist if the denominator is zero. So that's a good way to phrase it. Well, we've just said denominator can never be zero in the real number system. And we saw the graph too, and it's not. So the only place that this is going to have a uh, be equal to zero is where? And yeah, where well, that's equal to zero. So two x plus 2 is equal to 0. And where does that happen? Negative x equal negative 1. Perfect. Okay? Now, we still don't know for certain if that's an extreme of those, unless we look at the graph in the book, which we shouldn't. Okay? So how do we tell if that's an extrema or not? It's our only candidate for an extrema. There's no place where it doesn't exist, and there's only one place where it's equal to 0. That would suggest it could be, but that could be an inflection point, you know. So what would we try to do next? Okay. Or either plug into the function or plug in here and see if it's positive or negative. Those are two certainly two ways to do it. Either Plug in here on either side of that and see if anything comes up to be. Uh, well, you have to evaluate the value here first. I'll do a derivative. Okay, yeah, okay. And see if it's positive or negative. So, let's try. What do you want to plug in? Negative 2. Okay, that would be negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. And I think we've already really done this, haven't we? Negative 2 squared would be 4 plus 3 is 7. Uh, minus 4 is going to be positive. So going downhill on this side, so all we got to do, if 
Find something on the right hand side. Oh, shucks, what's that? Yeah, ah, okay, let's do zero. And what does that give us? Say okay. again? Positive two thirds, exactly. So we've got a negative first derivative on this side, zero here, and positive first derivative there. Yeah, that's got to be a what? Minimum, okay? But uh, we really need it in the form of a uh, <laughs> ordered pair. Yeah, so plug it in up there, and what do we get? Uh, the x value is negative 1. The y value is? Plug in a negative 1 up there. Did we do it yet? You don't need a calculator. Two. Okay. Uh, yeah, because of one log two. I don't guess you need the parentheses, inner parentheses there. Okay. One log two. And I think that's probably what we got. Yep, that's what we got. Too. You don't have to write out some long old decimal number. This is exact. Anything you write is going to be approximate. So there's the, and this is a absolute minimum. Okay? So I'm just going to write minimum. Not even relative minimum, absolute minimum. Okay? It's going up from there in both directions. All right, any questions on that? All right, good deal. Homework exercises here. Do either five or seven. They both should be at Calc Chat. <clears throat> I would do all of nine through twelve, though only nine and eleven are in the answers in the back are described at Calc Chat. These are just matching. They're pretty easy to do, almost just looking at them. Uh, then do any of the odds thirteen to seventeen. They're all at Calc Chat. Seventeen's at Calc View. Do 19, it's both a Calc Chat and Calc View, but it has four parts, so there's more than just one little problem there. Any of the odds 21 through 29, they're all at Calc Chat. 23 is at Calc View. Any of the odds 31 to 35, they're all at Calc Chat. 31 is at Calc View. Do 37, it's a Calc View. Either 39 or 41, they're at Calc View. Any of the odds 43 through 65, they're all at Calc Chat. 45 is at Calc View. Any of the odds 67 to 73, they're all at Calc Chat. Either 75 or 77, or, no, I'm sorry, any of the odds 75 to 79, they're all at Calc Chat. 77 is at Calc View. Either 81 or 83, they're both at Calc Chat. 81 is at Calc View. 85 is at Calc Chat. Any of the odds 87 to 91, they're all at Calc Chat. 87 is at Calc View. And 93 should be at Calc Chat. You can explore doing uh, 95 and think about doing 97 if you'd like. If they do have answers at Calc Chat, they should be there. And then there's a true false, a uh, couple of those 99 and 101. They should be at Calc Chat. Then, goodness gracious, um, any of the odds 103 through 109. 109 is just a conjecture, so I don't know if that would be a Calc Chat or not. But those should all be at Calc Chat. But just trying to figure out, is that a picture of Bryant Denny Stadium? I couldn't tell. I can't read what's there. I can't read that in the goal line. It, does, it doesn't look like Alabama, though, so I don't think so. I didn't think they'd have the picture there. But that's a, I even probably don't need to know that. Okay. Let's move on to example, I mean 5.2. How are we doing on time? All right. Yeah, about 40 minutes. Okay. Get as far as we can in 5.2. Yes. Test 4. I was going to give them out at the end. Do you need to go? Okay. Do you need to go? Well, that's all right. If you have to, uh, 
you got to go, you got to go, but you know, it's, I can not give it to you. Have you turned in everything else? Yes, sir. Okay. Including research paper? Yes, sir. All right, good deal. Okay, fine. I still need to talk to the book. Okay, I threw it away. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Whoa, I wasn't sorry. Here we go. That looks like it is. But that's my master. Goodness gracious, where are these? Get there. That's my master. Here we go. Okay. All right. And did you hear when the do? Oh uh, yes. Oh, you did. Okay. Are you graduating this term? Yes. Sir. No. Um. Changes to that. No. PowerPoint is really fast today. All right. Boy, what a pretty picture. This is still Chapter 5. Let's see if we can blow that up a little and see if it looks a little bit better. Oh, yeah, it looks great, doesn't it? Don't know why that's happening. I hope that's not the whole PowerPoint this way. Chapter 5 is logarithmic. We talked about exponential. We have it. And other transcendental functions I don't think we'll get to. Uh, this is really ugly. Ah, good. 5.2 is natural logarithmic function integration. So we did differentiation. Let's hit integration. It says, use the log rule for integration to integrate a rational function, okay? And integrate trigonometric functions. Wow, why are we doing that here, okay? The log rule for integration. <clears throat> we know this. Derivative of the log x is what? 1 over x, excellent. How about this? Derivative of log. That's the value u. What would that be? u prime over u. Yeah, we know that. Okay. Uh, these two together produce the following integration rule. If u is any differential function of x, then the antiderivative, or integral, of 1 over x dx had better be log x. Right? Differentiation takes it this way. U. Integration takes it the other way. With one exception, plus c. Anytime it's an indefinite integral, plus c. And if you had this, 1 over u du, now u is some differentiable function of x, then this would be the uh, log of the absolute value u plus c. Now notice here they do put the absolute values in there. They had them up here, but you need them there because. You can't do it in places where the uh, u or x would be zero or negative. Negative. Zero is just doesn't help. Negative does. But you do need to put the plus c there. Now, the key to this one is recognizing the du. If u is some differential function of x, then whatever this u is here, if its derivative is up here, like 2x dx, that, and this is an x squared, yeah, this works perfectly. Okay? But if it's not, you have some more work to do. Okay? But those are true, yeah, of course, that's the theorem. Because du is u prime dx, you remember that, don't you? The written as a differential form. 
to use the X to do prime, to multiply both sides by dx, so you leave out that one. The second formula can also be written this way, the antiderivative u prime over u du is uh, the x involved hypothetic u. So this, instead of, say, before it was a u prime here, a du here, I write the u prime dx there in that way. That, to me, is a lot better. Alternate forms of what they're calling the log rule. Okay. So let's do one. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll let them get by with doing that first one. Y'all wouldn't have been able to figure that out without it, would you? Okay. Where do we go from there? Oh, wrong, 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 wrong. There. Okay. What's the next step? Anybody? Two. Log of absolute value x plus c. All right, got it all. Pretty straightforward. All they do is put a two in there. You just pull outside the integral and go from there. Same thing as before. Make sense? Ooh, ugly. All right, two log x plus c. That was hard. Oh, then you could do this, couldn't you? Do the property logarithms in reverse, and as soon as you do that, you can leave that to the right side. Because as long as x was negative, when you square it, it's going to be positive. So you don't need the absolute values anymore. You just had to know x can't be zero, okay? But it couldn't be zero up here either, could it? So we don't have to worry about stating that. Okay, that does give you log x squared plus c. So. Any questions? Nice to use that step at the end. You can lose your absolute value sign. Make sense? Questions? Okay, because x squared cannot be negative, the absolute value Notation is unnecessary, and that final form will be the antiderivative. Okay. Now, integrals to which the log rule can be applied often appear in disguised form. Okay, so you have to strip off the disguise to see what they really are. Uh, for instance, when a rational function has a numerator of degree greater than or equal to that of the denominator, what would we do? Divide. Okay. Use division to divide that and get it into what we call an a proper uh, rational expression, not improper. Improper is when the numerator is degree greater than that number or even equal to when you divide and you get the other. Okay? So this will be what happened to example two, three, and four. Let's back up and do that. Okay? Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Find this. The integral of 1 over 4x minus 1 dx. Okay? What would you do? I think they've begun to disguise already, haven't they? One of the last things we did in chapter four, wasn't it? Yeah. Let u equal four. Yes, exactly. Substitution. Okay. Let u equal four x minus one. Sorry, I cut you off. Okay. Then what? I was so excited. Okay. Then what? Say again. Du is equal to 4 dx. I think I heard you say, I hope I heard you say, and it won't write. Okay, there we have it. But we don't have a 4 dx, do we? So what do we do? 
divide both sides by 4. Or multiply, yeah, you can do that, multiply and divide both sides by 4. However you want to do it, okay? And what you wind up with here is instead of dx, you have du over 4. So let's pull out the 1 fourth out here. That's the du over 4. And what we have is the integral of 1 over u du. Right? And what's that? Oh boy, how soon we forget. Second? Yeah, 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 it's d prime over u, but what's antiderivative of that? Second? Uh, absolute value of u plus c, perfect. And now we just plug in what u is, or u r, or whatever. What's u? 4x minus 1 plus c. That's all we can do with it. Okay? I started to put a parenthesis there realizing I can't have to leave that in absolute value notation. Yep, erase too much. All right, good deal. How did they do? Good for them. Excellent. Okay. Any questions? Three. Example three. Find the area of the region bounded by the graph of y is equal to x over x squared plus 1. The x-axis and the line y is equal, or x equal 3. You know, you almost have to draw this boo hiss, okay? I'm just going to let the book draw it for me, okay? <clears throat> what drawing does for you is show you where it begins, because they almost tell you here where it ends, x equal 3, once you draw it, you'll see that that end by the way. It's 0 at 0, because uh, that would be a 0, that would be a 1. So it's 0, it's 0, and then it's positive anything to the right of that, and we're stopping, and you've got the x-axis here, so you have to do some stuff on top, and you're stopping at x equal 3. Now, no way I would have known there's that hump there, but you do know it's positive here, it's positive forever out there, uh, and we're stopping at x equal 3. So we basically know our limits then. Okay? So this is going to be a good old what would be the area bounded by that? The integral, exactly. Integral of what? x over x squared plus 1 dx. Okay, if you need to draw your little picture, if I had drawn the thing, the dx is your the width of your little strips, and the function value is the height of the little strips, and you're summing those up from 0 to 3, because that's where your limits are. 0, because that's where it crosses the origin of the x-axis at 0, and stays positive from then on, but we're stopping at 3. How would you proceed with that then? Substitution, good. And what would you substitute? X squared plus 1. Then du is equal to? And, oh, what's that again? I can't, a little louder. Isn't 2x dx? Yeah, okay. That's why I kept listening for and couldn't hear it. Okay, 2x dx. Agreed? But, yeah, he wanted it to be x dx, didn't you? You don't always get everything you want, do you? 
Not in this class. Okay. Where do you go from there? Yeah, let's divide out a 2 here. So we do have an x dx, which is what you want. You do get it, don't you? Okay. But then you could do your 1 half out front because that's your du over 2. And I'm going to put the integral sign there, but I'm not going to put our limits yet. Uh, what do we have then? Help me. x dx is du over 2. I already got the over 2 out front, so there's our du. And what you got in the denominator? u. Okay. Now, let's deal with the limits. How do we do that? Zero in for x, and what do you get? One. And you plug three in for x, and you get ten. Okay. Now you do the integration, and what do you get? Anybody? <coughs> Excuse me. ln of okay you could if you wanted to if you just love what writing those little vertical bars but see the x square plus one is always positive you can just say that but no reason to go back x square plus one if you change the limits here it's just using that if you're going to do x square plus one then we do this because so these are the limits for x those are the limits so we'll just evaluate this between 1 and 10. Okay? And what does that give us? 2 times... Help me, somebody. Two times what? Say again? I can't hear well. I can hardly hear at all. Okay. Log of 10. Okay, where do you get your plus 1? Okay, it'd be minus log 1, right? Is that what you were saying? You're plugging back into here. Is that right? Okay. If you are, no, it's perfectly fine. If you're doing that, then you use 3 to 0. If you're plugging into the x's, you use 3 to 0. If you plug into u, you use 1 and 10, or 10 and 1. Okay? So don't cross those up. Okay. So, but even if you did this one, if you're plugging into this, when x equals 0, this gives you log 1. Okay. Not 1, but log 1. Okay? And what's log 1, by the way? 0! Okay? Log of 1 is 0. So your answer is 2 log 10. Which you could say, if you wanted to, I don't know why you'd want to, is ln of 100. But there's no real advantage to that. I just do soon do log 10. But you could do log 100 if you wanted to. Okay. Wait a minute. Huh. How did I get a 2? That's a 1 half. Goodness gracious, it must be a Monday. All day long. Okay. 1 half. Well, so that would be not log 100. Then. 1 half log 10. Let's just leave it like that. Or the log of 10 to the 1 half or square root of 10. If you wanted to do that, but why would you? One half log 10. Okay. Sorry about that. Any question? Besides how not to make dumb mistakes. Okay. Now, we didn't quite get the log, or example 4, did we? The next thing was going to be example 5. Is that right? 
Is that what we had? I can't remember. Let me see. Yeah, we still have example four to do. Okay, so let's do example four. Now, don't let the time sneak up on me too badly here. I want to give you a couple of things before we, before you leave. Uh, so let's do example four. What is the integral of 3x squared plus 1 over x cubed plus x dx? Where would you begin? Anybody? Absolutely. I mean, Bill just saw that right off the top. If you let u be x cubed plus x, the numerator is du, which would be 3x squared plus 1 dx. So this would be, you can just go straight to uh, du, <laughs> yeah, du over u, okay? Or u prime dx, well, whatever. But with the understanding that let u equal x cubed plus x, okay? So what would that be? x cubed plus u. Perfect. Uh, plus 3x, goodness gracious. Yeah, the absolute value of u, which is u is your x cubed plus x. Now, don't think, and I don't think any of you would, but just in case you were beginning to think this way, it's not that you have higher powers of u that you can eliminate. It's only when they're squared powers is there any chance of eliminating the absolute value part. If you have, if you have uh, even odd powers, too, you're just as likely to be negative as you are positive. So you, you can't do anything with that. That is your answer with one exception plus e okay wait a minute oh that was just the a part sorry i looked down and saw the answer to d i said no way okay but no that's the a part all right this has four parts okay let's do the next part b is the antiderivative of secant squared over tangent. Dx. What you say there? Anybody? Okay, if, if you let u equal tangent x, then you have, again, the integral of du over u, which is which is that exciting, huh? ln of absolute value tangent x. Plus C. Okay, now, just a couple of things here. We've hit this a time or two before, but let me just mention it again. You have two things to watch out for now. Okay, number one, x can't be any value that makes the denominator zero before you integrate it, because those values aren't allowed at all. So those are all the half pies. So x can't be any half pie. But then when you get there, your x can't be, you're taking the absolute value of, of tangent x, or well, tangent x, remember. So as the value of infinity goes up to zero at zero, and then goes positive infinity, so every one of these, you're basically picking up every, uh, 
from pi negative pi halves to zero, you're pushing up there. So you have to value times that that point. So just several things to keep in mind there. But writing it this way does it all for you. You just assume you can't put down any values that don't make sense, like pi halves. Okay. Okay. Let's go to, that was B, let's do C. Integration of, boy, these are all, well, no, this isn't quite, okay. X plus 1 over X squared plus 2X DX. Little bit of a twist on this one, what's that? Anybody? U equals x squared plus 2x. Yeah, well, u equal x squared plus 2x. Then 2x plus 1 dx. du is equal to 2x plus what? Plus 2 dx, which then you can write as 2, yeah, 2 times x plus 1 dx, and I don't want the 2 in there, so let's divide it out, and that makes it du over 2 if I could write, okay, so this then becomes 1 half, remember that's a 1 half this time, okay, I don't want you screwing it up again like you did last time, okay, and what would you have here? du over u. And that antiderivative is a one-half log u plus c. But we'll go back and plug in. That'd be one-half the log of whoops, absolute value x squared plus 2x plus c. Real tempted to think that's going to be positive, but there are some values, not many, that will be negative. Okay? So you do have to put absolute value bars if there's any chance in them to be negative. Okay? So. All right. Done? Finally, the last one. Sorry. The integral of 1 over 3x plus 2 dx. Where would you begin? Three x plus two, then three. Can't hear. Oh yeah, D, you said dx. I can't hear. And then divide by three. Okay. All right, and that gives you one third the integral of du over u. Right. That would be one third log u plus c. That would be one third log absolute value 3x plus 2 plus c. All right, good deal. <coughs> All right. Uh, says, with antiderivatives that involve logarithms, it's easy to obtain forms that look quite different, but are still equivalent, and then they give you some examples like that. But, what they're getting to next, and I don't know where a good place to stop it is. Um, I 
I guess it's good to go and do this for 10 minutes. I really want to, I wish we had time for this. It's good stuff. I maybe should show you one example of what you do if you have uh, an integral like 5. So let's just do it quickly. What would you do with that? Did you read this? I think we read it before. Come on back. Integrals in which the logarithm of if your degree of the numerator is greater than or equal to the degree of the denominator, then divide. So you remember how to divide. That was a big question. How do you do that? Anyone remember? Hint. If you're missing a term, like the denominator is missing a linear term, put a zero in there x squared plus 0x plus 1. Divide that into, it's the denominator into numerator, which would be x squared plus x plus 1. Way too long of a little sign there, but it's okay. x squared will go into x squared. How many times? Easy. 1. Multiply x squared plus 0x. That's why I put the 0 term in, the, the x term in there is a 0. Okay, plus 1. Then subtract or change signs and add. I kind of like doing change signs and add, but this works okay this way. Oops. If I can get my eraser to work. There we go. Uh, whoa. Okay. These then go out, and you just got x as a remainder. Now, in long division of a polynomial, any time you get a remainder down here of lower degree than your numerator, you're done dividing. Now, if there are any other terms here to break down, bring down those limits, and that's your remainder. So what this tells you is this numerator is the integral of dx, just dx, okay, that's 1 dx. I didn't need a line. <laughs> get into a hurry and do dumb things, okay? That's your 1 dx plus your remainder, which is the integral of x over x squared plus 1 dx, okay? I think I can even do that one. What's that be? Integral of dx? No, one is your argument there. Let's see, antiderivative of one. X, this will be X plus, and then you can go and do your uh, thing like we did before with U equal X squared plus one, you get a one half, all that kind of stuff. You can take care of Do this integration first. Now that was a real easy one. If, if that was anything more complicated, for instance, numerator is x cubed or stuff like that, then you might have several terms there. So it's just being x squared is a single term. Okay, but that's how you proceed uh, using long division before integration. Okay? Now, I'm not going to do any more. I wish we had time. Uh, there's some guidelines here. Well, let's see. Let's just see. Let me erase mine so you can at least read what they did. Uh, we did the division, okay, and they got the same thing we did, integrate this, and this, the integral of this is just 1 dx, so don't change it, plus the integral of that, uh, that, okay, we jumped right to this. They multiply and divide, which is a perfectly good way to do it. Come on. Okay. Um, and then the... Uh, that will give you uh, one uh, one half log of your denominator. Okay, and that one you don't have to put an absolute value until x squared plus one and over to zero. So you have x plus one half log of x squared plus one. Let's see. Okay. Now here are the guidelines. Uh, won't go through all these. I think we've done most of them. 
but I want to, uh, then they solve differential equations. Basically, all you do is multiply both sides by dx, integrate both sides. You get y on the left and you can get your other stuff there. Oh, that's such a good problem to do, but that's one that we did with substitution. Uh, you can do it with substitution. Oh, it's such a good problem. What would you do here? It's a little bit on the tricky side, but not too much. What's the most complicated part of that problem? That's it. So let that be your... You. And then what? One over x dx. Perfect. So what do we have here? Here's your one over x dx. That's your du and your over u. There we are right where we were before. What does this give you? Absolute value of u uh, plus c. And then you plug in what that is, and that's the log of the absolute value of log x. Believe it or not, that's all it is, plus c. So there's, there's the answer. God, come on. Uh, you can't read it with my scratch there. Why it's doing this today, I don't know. Every time I touch the, the computer, it just it wants to shut down. Okay. Log of absolute value log x. Okay. Yeah, quit that. <laughs> okay. So the solution is the log of log. <laughs> log of absolute value log of x. Let's see. All right. Don't have time for the. Yes. Three minutes? Okay. All right. Uh, I just wanted to show you real. If y'all are in Cal 2 in the summer, and if you want to start here, we'll start here. But uh, I think we have enough that you could... We've already done a lot of this already, so I didn't want to go back and do these. These are not transcendental functions. These are trig functions. Now, I think we know how to do those. But those are your, those functions. That's the end of the slide set. But I wanted to show you... And uh, sorry that was use too much time getting there. I wanted to show you 5.3. Okay, and we can pick up here wherever you want to next time, but in case you don't, in case you're going to be somewhere else, I wanted you to see this before you go. Okay? That's what the first slide should have looked like before. Oh, man. No, this is it. Yeah. It's based on that. Uh, you'll think, why didn't we do this first? Exponential function. Differentiation and integration. Just want to show you the rules. Natural expo exponential function is the inverse function of log x. Here's log x, there's e to the x. Now, most other texts I've talked from start with this one and then define log x that way. Because then we're using fundamental theorem of algebra, it was sort of easy to go on and start with this one. Now we just do this. That's the inverse function of it, e to the x. That's how e to the x looks. And here's the thing I want you to know about e to the x. Well, here's a couple things. The log of e to the x of the inverse function of it would be x, that kind of stuff. Yuck! Okay. Now, just, 
general rule of log of equal to x is x equal to log x is x. Ever functions on these things. Okay? As long as the domains are right. Remember, this domain has to be anything greater than zero, so that has to be anything greater than zero. This one can be anything in the world, uh, and that uh, can also. Okay, so you just have to keep up with your domains. Okay, you may not know the x is the domain of e to the x is all real numbers, but if you go back. Yeah. What is going on? Yeah. You see, the domain of this is all real numbers. All negative numbers are going to be alpha close to zero, but never zero. Positive numbers are just zero. Larger and larger and larger. The domain is all real numbers. Just like the range of log x is all real numbers. Okay. What I wanted you to see, okay, we're not going to do those now. They're fairly easy to do. Or maybe it's not even in this section. How much time? Any? Is that it? Why is it doing this? Okay. These are just rules for exponentials. You know most of these already from before. We just have been dealing with the number E. Here's what I want you to see. The nicest thing in the world, my favorite function in the world, derivative of E to the X is E to the X. Guess what the integral of E to the X is? E to the X, all right. That's why it's called the natural base of our number system. When you get the calculus, that's your favorite. That is the easiest one ever to have. I wanted you to see that before you end this talk. Okay? Uh, and if that was e to the u, if it's e to the u, then how to the u. Okay? Just like you would expect. If that was e to the x squared, it would be e to the x squared times 2x. Or 2x to the x. I wanted you to see that for you, Ed, so you could leave on such a high note picking. Why didn't we do those first? Okay, they're so easy. All right, let me give you your uh, that last test. And really, it's I didn't do anything in Chapter 5. I started to, but I thought, you know, they've worked hard. And if I tell them I'm not going to do it, they won't show up. No, they wouldn't do that. Uh, Why do I have such trouble getting those? Here we go. All right. Ten questions with little problems. Okay. And get them done. Good, and you've not finished it already? What were you doing? Huh? Okay. All right. Good deal. Uh, please do your student course evaluation. Please, folks. I'm going to try to remember to ask you when you come turn in your test. So, uh, so get those done, please. And uh, it's been a great class. Best 125 class I think I've ever had. Way to go. Keep doing good work. All right. There's the paper. Can't believe I'm getting some research papers. Okay. Yes. I'll show you test three today. Can okay. I look at it very quickly? I forgot to change one thing on it. Okay. Let me see if I can find it. Just take a second. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah.
book and a half. Yeah. 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 I'm just thinking, is this thing with some boilers for the air? It's done. Boiler? Yeah. No, I don't think so. If so, you can still do it. Yeah. Because I've got the paper and you can't see it. Okay. <laughs> One of the most incredible mathematicians of all time. No, you can email it, but I grade what I get. So if it comes across squirrely, I grade squirrely and mark off that. So yeah, be sure it's in exactly the format you want. That's the advantage of printing it off. You get to see, ooh, no, I don't want it looking like that, you know. So, so yeah, but I will accept them. Yeah. Okay. Good deal. Let's see, who were we wound up missing today? Ayana, and you got one for us. Where is that other? Yes, ma'am. Okay. That's awesome. Are you going to try to use my little sample? If I can find anything for you, please. Okay. So, here's the last question. I wanted to remember the paperwork. You had already printed the credentials previously. For what? You had already printed the credentials previously. Right. And so, they just didn't get sent to Dr. Davis or Dr. Parker or who right. they needed to go to. Dr. Davis? Uh, yeah, no, the only thing is, she's finishing her master's now. Uh -huh. If you do it now, well, she still only has a bachelor. Uh -huh. Would she be in the system only as a bachelor, or does she need to get the transcript to you before we take it? We can, we, can, we can go ahead and, um, I think we can go ahead and send it through. Right. And then once she gets approved, I can go in the system and change her, okay. from, the, and, and change her from the bachelor. And then, then um, if she provides a transcript, we've got proof that she's qualified to. But right. I don't know if we set on that. Yeah, well, she's only doing development anyway. She's already qualified to get development. Right, right. And you're, talk, and you're talking about developmental for the summer, right? Yes. You can say I can't guarantee her a factor or something until I see what the health is saying. Yeah, right. So right. that's well, why I say, do we want to do this until we know that we're going to hire her? Is there any extra work from you or No, not really. I went ahead and gave her the new hire paperwork, but I did tell her when I gave it to her, I said, this is contingent on her getting approved. Yeah. And then I gave her the paperwork and said, this is contingent upon there being sufficient enrollment, there being a right. class assigned to you, and I said, and then your credentials being approved by the appropriate dean right. and vice president. Right. I said, Dr. Fowler has approved. Oh, and I already signed it. Yeah, you already signed it. You, okay. didn't, sign, you didn't sign the intent to hire, though. Oh, that, that's, yeah, that's yeah. right. And, but you did sign the credentials form. Right. And, but it still needs to go on to Dr. Davis, I guess, and then Dr. Parker, right? Okay. Would be the order. Yeah, that would be it. And, and, Maybe uh, Dr. Pruitt, does it need to go to him, too? Who do you go to first? Do you go to Dr. Pruitt first? Yeah, he's, he's the. Okay, so he's over your division, though. So I guess it would be Dr. Pruitt, then Dr. Davis, then Dr. Parker, then Dr. Parker. He's called my area dean, she's the dean. Yeah, area dean, yeah. But, yeah. So. I don't know what's on the Yeah, I'll have to look and see how many spots are on the field. You think I know as soon as I see them, but I know right. right off the top of my head. But, right. but uh, we'll, we'll, um, and I'll go ahead and okay. we'll just talk. She said so I just wait to do the intent to hire until we see if there's a motion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until we see if there's I could go ahead and get a credential to prove because it's going to, even if she graduates, it's going to take a while before she gets a transcript to reflect her degree, right? Usually, well, I don't she, know. Yeah, I don't know. She said she she said she was going to finish early, so she should be able to get the, the uh, transcript early. Yeah. Now, whether you know, her school knows that or not, I don't know. Well, because what? Semester starts, what, May 22nd? Something like that. Somewhere in there. So, yeah, so we'll, yeah. I'll, I'll work it out. I was just going to make sure because she just came to me and said, Dr. Fowler said, you know, that, that, you know, he was going to try to get me a class this summer. So I wanted to confirm that. And then, too, to see, um, I may go ahead and get Dr. Um, Dr. Uh, Tina Tradition's proof. I'm probably going to see what's happening with that. Because you may not even have anything more. I know. That's what I told you. I can't guarantee anything now. Uh, Dr. Thomas may wind up having full summer doing 
such a project yet. We already have was half time because she was doing that role. Well, yeah. 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 And then something else came up in fact we were Ward wanted her to look into maybe doing that too, but she you know one that would make that or something. So then I might have to shift people around to cover hers and that may open something up for her. Yeah, girls in fact that's it. Yeah. All I can think of is girls ink and that's Said she's been emailing me like crazy. I think all the emails I got to think of first. Yeah, yeah, you got a contract too. I emailed to you. Oh, you did? Yeah, we, we tried something different. We went to do it with Hoff. We have so many contracts, but it's a no be sign. If you go out there and see something from me, it's a no be sign. Uh -huh. You can um, open it up and you can sign it. If you use your iPad or your cell phone, you can sign it with your finger and then send it back to me. Yeah, if you rather come to my office, I don't have an iPad, and I left my cell phone yeah, in Georgia this weekend. Yeah, so whenever, but yeah, just whenever you get a chance to buy a Because some people have, they come in and say, some people just want to come with that. We were trying something different. Yeah. Right. And it works really well for those that can't make it on campus. Right, like right, right, right. Dual enrollment, um, those right. that are political instructors for nursing, and then some of them that teach at night that can't be here to Hawaii. Right, day. exactly. But we were just going to try it out this this semester since we don't have the meetings on two. There's not any meeting instructors. Right. There will be no way I'm going to get the file because I have to send each of those documents separately. Oh. Uh, and like, you know, that's like 300 people. <laughs> yeah. No, well, I'm not going to do with the instructor in the fall. But we thought we'd try it on a basis to see how well it worked. So, uh, yeah, I stopped by recently and said it was a second manager, so they just have come through. Yeah, they just came through. Um, oh, I see. Okay. And I think it was maybe. Thursday or Friday. Okay. A week ago, maybe. Okay. So, it's so time to apply. And time to apply. Yeah, when you come with everything, it's fine. Okay. I'm going to borrow it with me. I want you to think it. Yeah, that's all right. I'll and, be glad uh, to do it. I wanted to take classes now. You have short term between all your classes today. I asked you about her. Okay. But I think I will hold off because I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it.